All right, everyone, it's time to talk about libertarianism as it involves uh, the concept, some people think that it does, of forced diversity or open borders. Um, the movement of people in a completely free manner from sovereign state to sovereign state or ignore the dissolution of the very concept of sovereign states. Uh, as well as the concept that people, that the social Marxism in the post-Obama era here in, you know, basically post-80s in Western Europe uh, has begun to degrade the fabric of civic culture and it's a violation of the NAP. This is why I say, for my part, as someone, I, I mean, I can use the term libertarian or classical liberal to describe myself, but at, at this point, as far as the libertarian party goes, it's like they've gone off into la-la land further than the end caps. It was a political strategy, by the way. They were trying to cobble up Bernie bro votes. Their idea was, their strategy was, hey, a few million extra people will vote for us, and it did work. Um, if we wine and dine and court the people, uh, that were disenfranchised by Clinton being rigged into the DNC primaries as the, uh, the person to go up against Donald Trump. It worked and then it destroyed the LP's talking points. They're still having issues right now figuring out what the hell they stand for. They haven't decided whether it be primarily an ANCAP open borders party or a limited government monarchist party. You know, whether they want to appeal just to the youth or whether they want to appeal to sane people. Uh, I guess they have to make that uh, distinction. But I'm not an open borders libertarian because I'm intelligent. I'm intelligent enough to understand that a culture can't survive such a thing. Um, it doesn't matter. Usually the excuse used is, yeah, but we've got a big population, so it's not like, you know, Tonga. If Tonga took in thousands of, of people, maybe it gets displaced, but we've got hundreds of millions of people, so it's not a threat. Taken to its logical extreme, if you were to form a, a truly anarchic border, borderless state, it would be possible for another nation to deliberately organize the movement of people in massive numbers into your state, gaining immediate citizenship and then voting out the libertarian policies that allowed them to do that, solidifying themselves forever, and it would become uh, the libertarians, if they support the concept of open borders, don't see how that's abusive, then they wouldn't, you know, they wouldn't be able to do anything to fight back. They would end up being suppressed by the state that had been created by other groups like literally a communist movement or something. It could happen. China's got the most population in the world. It's a communist state. All they'd have to do is find 200 million people willing to go and, uh, and, and cross over, over into the open borders U.S. That's all they would have to do. I'm sure I can hear the screeching right now of that's a sci-fi idea. Not, not this time from the alt-right that probably agrees with the basic summation, but from rather from maybe the, the ANCAP groups. It's really funny. Libertarianism can't survive that because of demographics. It's a simple truth. Especially, it might not have been a problem early on in, in maybe U.S. history when people say, we're a nation of immigrants. Yes, we were a nation of immigrants. There was no welfare state extremely low population density, and the people primarily coming here are people disaffected by authoritarianism. They, literally, the libertarians of Europe became coming over here along with a few rich investors that said, well, no, I'm going to make a plantation or something and hire other people. That's basically how the early U.S. formed. Homestead Act era, our density is still terribly, terribly low. Half of the country's land area is barely settled other than a few trading posts and a few shit shacks where some hermits go kill muskrats out, out in the rivers or something. That was half the U.S. at that time. We had barely linked up coasts. Railroads come along, they say, oh, okay, well, we're going to build railroads and open up the West, and we'll settle these areas, and a bunch of small towns spring up. Some do well, some don't do well. Oil's found here, and gold's found there, and coal is found there. Things are, are extracted. The United States becomes wealthy. We don't have any empty land area anymore to do that in other than national parks. Oddly enough, then Trump opens up some of that land for development and then the entire left that's screeching about these things has a big problem with it. What the fuck do you think it is to absorb excess population in certain areas that are flagging off and there's nowhere else for people to go? Build a few more little towns, at least temporarily stave off the problem. Uh, secondly, to the idea of forced diversity, some people, some libertarians, seem to have no fundamental problem uh, with the idea that social justice warriors would use private companies, for instance, in communications tech, to suppress people who disagree with them. Is that not just the privatization of abuse when that company is co-opted by government? The company is subject to the government, 
number one. It's coerced by government, foreign governments or domestic, number two. I would think it'd be even worse if it's a foreign government like Merkel's Germany telling a U.S. firm to stamp down on U.S. speech. I would think that would be a grave concern to an actual libertarian. Apparently, it's not to some people. They're like, oh, yeah, but it's a private company. They can do what they want. Okay, so they're coerced into it. Their NAP is violated. You don't see that as a problem either. Broadly speaking, the NAP exists at the national level too. Because if a person is within a nation, they're like, well, I'm, I want liberty, I want individualism, I want to be left alone. They have the right as well to use the legal means to safeguard the continuance of that system, or it is unstable. It will collapse. It will go the way of the dinosaur, and then the very concept of libertarianism goes out the window. This is, oddly enough, the biggest way in which I overlap with the alt-right. The biggest thing that they have said, that I have heard them say anyway, in years, that I absolutely agree with is that fact. Not on a racial basis necessarily, it could be a cultural basis, it could be a religious basis, whatever. The culture though undergoes an overthrow. The concept of liberty as it's generally held will ironically enough be snuffed out by the excess use of that in the government's function. This is why I'm not an ANCAP, I'm a monarchist. I believe in constraining government. I want to end the drug war, it's unhelpful. I don't want proxy wars. I don't want world war mongering a la maybe a John McCain or a Hillary Clinton. Oh, bomb, 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 Iran says McCain. Ha ha, we came, we saw he died. He, he, he says Hillary Clinton. I'm against all that. We're excessively taxed. We are excessively regulated. The very idea of a property tax negates the very concept of capitalism where it's present. We got all sorts of problems. But fundamentally, an absence of government doesn't really solve any of those things. You'll end up with corporations coming in, basically doing the same thing, and then you won't even have the application of the Constitution to uh, give you a reason to defend yourselves. A lot of people still think the Constitution gives them rights. So long as that's the case, and they don't understand that they're natural rights that are simply being enumerated, you better hope that there's some remnant of state there instead of corporate control, otherwise eh, everyone will get abused. It would be worse. Now, oddly enough, it would be worse than the system we have now. End up with a really weird totalitarian state at that point. It'd be like a, be like a Brave New World, maybe a little bit, or a 1984 fusion where it's just, it's a, st a diesel punk world, total dystopia. I'm breathing those cold, it would be like uh, Metropolis or something like that. That's, that's what it would begin looking like. It'd be a, a fairly unpleasant world. Okay, maybe some cool style and and, you know, cinema would be really good, but other than that, nah, not a lot of reasons actually to live there, maybe. You know, things can be more efficient than brass piping, because that's what they thought that things would look like back then. I got it kind of right on the robot, though, if you actually compare the, <laughs> the uh, oh, uh, what's it called, machine and mensch to uh, you know, modern robotics. There's a little bit of overlap there. It's almost a little bit creepy, considering that was almost 100 years ago. It was I think it was a 20s-era movie, if I remember correctly. Um, but no, true libertarianism cannot weather open borders. It can weather immigration, there's no problem there, but if the borders are thrown open a la Obama, then it destroys it. Here's the problem. The Democratic Party in the United States doesn't care about third world, they don't care about foreigners, they don't care about any of these people, they, they just don't care. But they are willing to gobble up extra votes by pretending to care. Because they like to manipulate people to do this. The, the plan overall, and all along, if we look at the leaked memo we've seen in the last few days, the, the overall plan was to admit a bunch of people, defer action, say that it's temporary, and long term it was meant to be uh, backdoor amnesty, to create a new block of several million new voters that would be overwhelmingly democratic. If these people only knew that the Democratic Party saw them as nothing more than political pawns, I have a feeling that wouldn't be the case. But the real problem is this. If the Democrats were to pull that once and gain a permanent voting block, it might not be a problem, oddly enough. But the fact is, second and third generation immigrants become less and less liberal, less and less Democrat friendly, and more and more friendly towards conservatism. Ah, well that's a little bit of a problem now, isn't it? And we see that over time, if, if immigration slows, this country is going to experience not a blue wave, but a red wave. Just speaking in terms of, of statistical uh, situation there, uh, that will happen. The blueness of the Southwest that's encroaching right now will actually begin to recede. It'll go in the other direction. You can see it won't be blue Texas, it'll be red New Mexico at that point. I hope people realize that. It just, uh, it's just a reversal of fortune. It's intergenerational in nature, and it will happen. Uh, it'll be delayed a bit. It'll wait like 10, 15 years, 
you'll begin to see the effects. Uh, so don't worry too much, I would say, to people that are like, oh, civic is, is bad and libertarianism is cucked or something. Okay, just watch. Watch and see if my prediction's true. Just see. The Democrats, therefore, they have to do it multiple times. They can't just do it once. They have to do it every generation. So they have to do it with the Reagan administration. They have to do it prior to that with the, with the end uh, of, and this was pointed out, uh, the immigration system as it was prior to the 60s. They had to do it in the 2000s. Now they're trying to do it now. They would love in the next few years to, to do it again uh, for a fourth time, actually. Um, they, they may not get the chance to actually do that, which is good. It's good for the nation for them not to succeed at that. But that's definitely what they want because they have to. They need to keep refreshing that same voting lock and they get to use it as a wedge issue because what happens is if a Democrat's in charge, they, they try to get amnesty. If there's any resistance, they try to browbeat their opponents, whether it's the Republicans in Congress or Republican president by saying, oh, you're evil, wicked, and mean because you don't want people to be able to stay here. But the thing is, it was always a ploy. It was a ruse to begin with and people need to wake up to that. And the concept of forced like multiculturalism uh, as opposed to multi-ethnic, I've said before, a multi-ethnic state can function in a stable manner, but a multicultural state cannot. It is impossible. Um, we are not a salad bowl. No sane person ever wanted the United States to be a salad bowl. The very idea is anathema to the founding of the United States. The idea was to have one American culture, not multiple American cultures. Subcultures, fine. You know, you have Italian-American neighborhoods. They are going to have, there's going to be Italian flags and Italian restaurants and stuff. Nobody really has a problem with that. Or, or here's the enclave in Boston where you're going to get all sorts of Irish cooking and stuff like that. Uh, that's fine. Nobody cares. But to have a, a competing culture, a multicultural system, breaks down the civic fabric of that nation as well. I would say in such a situation, uh, that's not a good way to promulgate liberty. It's really not because there'll be less cooperation between groups of people. People who otherwise wouldn't be at each other's throats will be. And they'll be definitely used uh, as political wedge issues by whatever corporatized parties happen to exist at the time. The LP, by the way, they're fooling themselves if they think they can ever take control of the country with the kind of platform they have now in our current uh, forced diversity style situation. Now we're going to censor people with unpopular opinions. You get blacklisted from ever working a fucking gen at any... Uh, place of employ because you know we doxed you and you have out their beliefs so you know good luck getting a job you might as well be homeless uh, it's it's abusive that's exactly what it is and I see libertarians that don't seem to have a problem with this because it's it's not the government doing it would you be okay with a private company leaking the uh, personal messages of all users or something like if Twitter decided oh yo Gary Johnson's private messages yeah we can leak them would you defend that and say, well, it's a private corporation, they can do what they want? Now, I don't think that you'd like it very much. Or what about yours? Or if it decided, hey, uh, discussing libertarianism is now banned internet-wide, you know, the domain registrar t starts taking down any site that mentions it. Would you think that that was just, oh, it's a private corporation, that's okay. The free market will fix it, you know, despite the fact that there's an absence of a free market in the tech world. Um, that it'll be fine. It'll be uh, just dandy. No, I don't think that you'd like it very much. I think that you would vigorously oppose it, and then probably you'd come around to what I'm saying, uh, which is that privatization of abuse is the same thing, uh, and enforcing sort of the social justice warrior mentality uh, violates the NAP. And open borders will destroy a libertarian state, even if it's formed. That's about all. Peace out.